Yeah, uh, my name is Klaus Köhler and I, I just want to talk how I, I, I just want to tell you how I got into this issue. Um, I'm an in internal medical doctor who uh, worked in the oncological uh, department of the university in Kiel. And when, uh, when I worked there, we had the first AIDS patients. Well, they were, uh, we, I stood with a colleague um, in front of a patient who was suffering from lymphoma. He was suffering uh, from Burkitt lymphoma and we had a lot of uh, lymphomas at that time uh, in the oncological department. And um, the next day I was told uh, this guy with the lymphoma has got AIDS. And I asked, uh, how, how comes he got AIDS now? Um, yesterday he was suffering from lymphoma. And then they told me, well, he's got a positive HIV test. Hmm. That was in 1989 or 90, 98 or something like that. It was in the end of the 80s. We are all a little bit behind uh, the States. <coughs> And, um, well, I, I told to my colleague, well, that's for me, that's not a new a disease. It's just uh, the epidemic of a new test because we have this disease all, all the time here. We have histoplasmosis, we have lymphoma, we have uh, other sort of cancers. And uh, why is this lymphoma all of a sudden an AIDS case? And... Um, uh, I had another discussion with a friend of mine, uh, the, the colleague of mine, and he told me, show me an AIDS patient without the positive, uh, without HIV. And I, I said to him, well, that's a problem. <laughs> in, your, uh, in your opinion, that's not an AIDS patient if he has no HIV, but I can show you a lot of patients here in, at our ward who has the clinical sign of age. Look at the lymphoma patients who are tested negative. Look at histoplasmosis here on the other side, who is, uh, um, if, he, if she was HIV positive, would be an AIDS patient. That's what we all know. What is AIDS? AIDS is great. Um, it, it is still great. If you look at the epidemiology, we still have the AIDS problem in the uh, gay population. And uh, we had some documents in earlier times, you see that there was a almost 100% um, correlation with uh, poppers. You see that the AIDS crisis had a time when uh, poppers were widely available and were sold in a very high amount. And the problem was that the virus hypothesis was adopted by a press conference and not by a scientific paper. Then they were quick to uh, invent epi the, this epidemic. Uh, these uh, pictures are from, uh, various, uh, from the mainstream press, the Spiegel and Bild der Wissenschaften. Uh, we did extrapolate it and we found out that uh, in 1993 uh, whole Germany would die on AIDS or would get AIDS and uh, die two years later. That were the predictions uh, in, uh, at that time, and we know that hasn't happened. That's the problem which most of the doctors have, the correlation argument. You get a 100% correlation. That was the, 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 the talk which I had with my, with my colleague, that I couldn't show him an AIDS patient without an HIV test. And uh, on, uh, with that, you can really invent epidemics. You, you just need a new antibody test. For example, now with the, slime, with the swine flu, you, even, you don't even need a new disease. You just need a new antibody test and uh, spread it to the population. And then they say, well, yet now you've got a, a new flu, and it's, it's not anymore the old flu, the old flu. And I made a... Um, some skeptical thoughts about creating epidemics. You can take a disease whose cause is unknown, like uh, overweight, for instance, because if you ask the patient, uh, 
it's possible that it comes comes from too much eating. He always say, no, 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 that's impossible. I, if you if you knew what I eat, it's, it's just like like that. Uh, so you could uh, say, well, maybe it's an infectious issue, and if you uh, uh, you're going to isolate from the fat tissue and a virus, make an antibody test against it, and distribute it uh, to the population, then you will find some people who react positive to this antibody and are still thin. Then you need the the incubation period can say, yeah, you are thin now, but uh, wait for <laughs> 10 years, then you will be fat. And, uh, and uh, to prevent that, we'll give you uh, uh, antiviral drugs today. So that, that keeps you thin, and, uh, indeed. <laughs> yeah, what happened uh, to the AIDS crisis? The problem was that the licensing study was terminated too early. That, uh, that was the reason for the big disaster in the, in the 80s. You know this study. Uh, ACT, 1500 milligrams ACT was where, were studied with the placebo group. And after four months, the Verum group seemed to, be, to do better than the placebo group. But uh, if you look at the side effects, um, they showed already the imminent bone marrow suppression. But uh, they closed the study because the pressure of the patients were, was very high and also the pharmaceutical industry was interested in getting a new drug. So after four months, the placebo control was closed. And after that time, the mortality rose tremendously. Uh, the next, please. Is that the study? Yeah, that was the official study. And uh, the mortality rose tremendously, but we had no more control. That was the time when I had patients who heard about my critical um, view of AIDS came, and uh, those were critical about the ACT problem. And these were the survivors at that time. They're all these, they were all recommended ACT, but they all declined ACT. And, uh, that saved their life at that time. There was a very similar problem in another study, but uh, uh, this was uh, very obvious that there was something wrong. They investigated hepatitis B here, and uh, after a few months, um, the patients got really sick. They had uh, severe mitochondrial damage which led to lactic acidosis and liver failure. And that was not usual in hepatitis B patients. That's why the doctors noticed that there was something seriously wrong. In the case of AIDS and ACT, doctors thought, well, these poor guys have to die. They die in spite of ACT. That's what the doctors at that time thought. They didn't get it, or they got it very, very late that indeed ACT was the cause of the uh, wasting away of the patients. That's the, this devil circle. You have the virus hypothesis. You give antiviral therapy, and you get a slowly progressive immune suppression. And that indeed seems to uh, prove the virus hypothesis. So. That was the problem of the doctors in that time because we had no placebo control. It became then obvious in the Concord results that more ACT kills more people. They had, there was something like a placebo group. You had the IM group and the deferred group. That means that there were people who got ACT immediately and some got it later. And you see that those who got it immediately had the higher death rate. And um, this was already done with 1,000 milligrams ACT. It wasn't the initial high doses. And still you see that those who got more ACT had the higher death rate. It should have been the death of ACT, but somehow it sur survived in a s still smaller dosage. Mm. Then science wrote that there might be a problem with ACT that some people can take it, ACT can keep some AIDS patients alive, 
and even reverse the dementias, but it's so toxic that the majority of patients may not be able to take it. The problem is uh, once your bone marrow goes down, you have lost. If you, if you take them off the drugs, then uh, you are in a deep immunosuppressive state and uh, any microbe can kill you. That was uh, AIDS by prescription, as we heard already today from John Lauritz, and that was the time. So one good thing is that the therapy came down, that the dosage was reduced. And this, was, this is the uh, study which closed the discussion, I would say, which closed the discussion with, uh, with us and the orthodoxy because here you see the mortality of the hemophiliacs. That was a study that was done by Darby et al. and was published in Nature very widely. And you see that only the HIV positive hemophiliacs are going to die. Peter, you may, maybe you remember that <coughs> that was the slide they showed in Kiel when we had the talk there as proof that HIV causes AIDS, as ultimate proof that HIV causes AIDS. What you can see here is that ACT caused the death of the patient because it's tightly <coughs> exactly with his, he was administered in 1987, the mortality rose tremendously. And also what uh, most doctors don't know about hemophiliacs is the problem that um, they had uh, before factor eight was available, a very poor life expectancy. And that became much better while getting this factor eight. But at that time, they should be infected with HIV. So they should have died already uh, in, in, the, in the late 70s if HIV was the cause. But that didn't happen. Instead, their median lifespan doubled at that time. And they started to die exactly at the time ACT was administered. That's the problem with the, IV, uh, with the HIV hypothesis. If you are negative, you get the normal treatment. For TB, C, for TB you get the tuberculosis treatment, pneumonia, antibiotics, and histoplasmosis. You get antifungal. For CMV, you have a problem because you need antiviral, maybe. Septicamy, you can get antibiotics. And on the other hand, there you only get it for a short time until your symptoms are over and then you stop the treatment. But here you get lifelong antiviral treatment. That's why the prognosis is much worse on that side. That we hear today enough, well, ACE in Africa and a bad thing of HIV testing, false positive results in patients with leprosy and TB. And uh, next please. That's the situation. Uh, the bad situation that uh, now um, healthy children get toxic drugs in the, in the beginning of their lives. There are some thoughts I had when I saw this picture because uh, in Africa the main problem of AIDS is tuberculosis. And tuberculosis is of course transmissible to the child. That's probably the reason why the orthodoxy thinks that uh, it's better to treat children because they have sometimes maybe an effect that uh, children don't get TB if, uh, they, if they get these chemicals. But uh, it would be much better if they would take the antibiotic treatment and not this cytotoxic treatment. But also the cytotoxic treatment can kill TB but on a very high price that you just at the same time uh, damage the immune system. But that's, uh, I, I always try to understand a bit the orthodoxy because I'm, I'm myself, I'm an orthodox doctor. <laughs> so uh, that's why I think they think also that AIDS is transmissible because TB is transmissible and TB in Africa is uh, the, the AIDS defining disease. That's why they are so sure that they are right. Yeah, you had that already, the hemophiliacs. 
infection around that time and the lifespan doubles in 1985 and the sharp increase of mortality was exactly at the 